Running joke that is an encapsulation of how modern YouTube videos are rewarded for being comfort food. I mean Voduke. The Dark Knight is one of the characters of all time. In fact, he's even one of the melee characters of all time. But how is he one of the characters of all time? Let's find out by first talking about the Dark Knight at level 1. He has 4 HP, 7 armor, 2 armor regeneration, 3 attack, and 2 speed. The first eyebrow raiser about his stats is his health. 4 HP is the kind of stuff you see on ranged characters, not melee ones. The Dark Knight is an exception to this, because he can literally get one-shotted by an unblinded exalted. And any other magic or true damage will make a huge dent in his HP. Likewise, poison, burning, and bleed deal true damage, so a single bite from a spider can destroy him. It seems pretty contradictory to make the Dark Knight this weak, but there are two different explanations for this. The first is a story reason. The Dark Knight's in-game description reads, Having traded their vitality for great unholy powers, they have resorted to wearing heavy armor to compensate for their poor constitution. In other words, whatever HP they otherwise would have was sacrificed so that they could use dark magic. We'll get more into the dark magic later, because I have some choice words to say about this. The second explanation is a mechanical one. By having less HP, the character has an excuse to have other stats be higher. In the Dark Knight's case, it's his armor. 7 armor at level 1 is more than any other character can get, even at level 3. The one exception to this is the Knight, who still needs to get to level 3 just to get more than 6 armor. So 7 armor at level 1 is pretty impressive. When you're facing physical damage, the Dark Knight is unparalleled in his defensive options. I already explained how well 2 armor regeneration stacks with a character who has Fortify in the Knight review. So the Dark Knight is equally good at meeting the damage breakpoints of most enemies to tank them. His second passive, Armor of Thorns, adds an offensive element to his tanking. Every melee attack directed at him will cause the assailant to suffer one true damage. This includes AOB attacks, as long as they are still fundamentally melee skills. So the Trollbreaker's Ice Ram attack won't count, since that is a ranged skill at its core, but its basic attack will cause Armor of Thorns to trigger. Armor of Thorns also applies to melee attacks that deal non-physical damage, even though they technically are piercing the Dark Knight's armor. This passive is really satisfying to use on enemies. The fact that it deals true damage gives it an especially satisfying edge against armored enemies. It also counts as an attack for proccing the Sorceress's weakening curse. So even though the damage isn't very high on its own, it is pretty useful nonetheless. The usefulness of passives is all over the place in this game, so having something that is pretty darn good is pretty darn good. It's one of the darndest, goodest passives of all time. As for the Dark Knight's skills, his basic attack is Dark Slash. I've already made a few comparisons to the Knight, and this skill is the most reminiscent aspect of the character yet. Compared to Slash, which dealt 2-4 physical damage at level 1, Dark Slash deals 3 physical damage. In other words, it deals his attack stat every time. I have to gush about this. The game designers must have known how similar in functionality the Dark Knight would be to the Knight. So, just to add a little bit more of a difference between the two of them, they made the Knight's base attack RNG, while the Dark Knight would have a static damage value. I really like that about him, because it is both a pro and con to picking him instead of the Knight. Is a reliable damage source preferable to the opportunity to deal slightly more damage at the risk of dealing slightly less damage? Personally, I prefer having static damage, as that means you don't have to play it safe by betting on 2 damage from the knight, but to each their own, and I really like that that dichotomy exists. Dark Slash also has an epic effect to apply knockback to weakened targets. Like all knockback effects, this one is especially effective when it pushes enemies along burning tiles, as it forces them to take an additional 1 true damage. This epic effect has a natural synergy with that, because it requires the enemy to be weakened, and burning is a form of weakened. The Dark Knight's second level 1 skill is Rupture. This deals his attack stat plus 2 as physical damage, as well as applying bleed. Bleed deals an additional 2 damage as true damage, so it comes out to being his attack stat plus 4 damage. As opposed to any defensive skill, Rupture stands out as an offensive option in his arsenal. However, this does serve a defensive purpose like any damaging skill can. After all, it does so much damage that you can often kill an enemy using this skill alone. 
By killing them, they are no longer a threat on the battlefield, which gives the Dark Knight less attacks to tank against. One of the best ways to use the ability is to kill an enemy who would otherwise deal non-physical damage to the Dark Knight. Ideally, it means the only enemies left are ones who deal physical damage and have to contend with his huge armor rating. This skill applies knockback by default and has no epic effect. The 3 turn cooldown is pretty standard for a heavy attack like this, but the damage is so high that it really stands out as a powerful skill. It's certainly reminiscent of the chainsaw insta-kill in Vengeance. In my opinion, it's one of the coolest abilities in the game, and certainly among the strongest level 1 skills. Similar to the Knight and Zapper, the Dark Knight is another character who can carry his own weight even if he stays at level 1 the whole time. Not only is he an excellent tank against physical damage, but he also deals a massive amount of damage with Rupture, surpassing the damage that several characters can do in a single turn even at levels 2 and 3. But his low HP is a glaring weakness, punishing the player hard for letting him take any non-physical damage. He also reaches his limit for tanking a little sooner than the Knight, as he lacks any skills that inflict stun or some other distraction for enemies to buy him more time. You have to be able to kill an enemy with Rupture in order to buy that extra breathing room, so if you can't, he will cap out sooner. But if you can avoid letting him get overwhelmed or hit by non-physical attacks, he will certainly excel. The Dark Knight at level 2 Now he has 5 HP, so he can't get one-shotted by Unblinded Exalted anymore. He also goes up to 8 armor, 4 attack, and 3 armor regeneration. This is a situation where, statistically, he outclasses the level 2 knight pretty hard. She doesn't get extra armor, despite that being her most useful stat. Meanwhile, the dark knight gets all the same stat gains that she does, plus more armor, even though he already had more armor at level 1. Even though the knight is a sigma female, the dark knight is a sigma male. This is definitive proof that men are better than women. Thank you Ironhide Game Studio for enlightening us. The first level 2 skill choice the Dark Knight has is Impervious. This skill fully heals his armor, then adds an additional 4 armor to that amount. So at base level 2 power, he should have 12 armor total. If he is burning or poisoned, it also removes that status. This is a purely defensive skill. The most optimal usage of it is to let him take some damage first so that the armor heal can be as effective as possible. In total, he can take a ton of physical damage and ideally return some damage with armor of thorns. If you want to focus specifically on returning more damage, his second level 2 skill option is Spike Reforge. This adds an additional 3 damage to armor of thorns for a total of 4 true damage. This hits a major HP breakpoint useful for one-shotting enemies like saplings. What's great about Spike Reforge is that it also fully heals the Dark Knight's armor and removes burning and poisoned. So, between 4 extra armor or 3 extra true damage on armor of thorns, I find Spike Reforge to be better the vast majority of the time. The best part of Impervious is just the niftiness of seeing a unit with a really high armor stat. Combine this with stat buffs and the Knights Hold the Line skill, and you can get up to 20 armor at level 3. But you don't really need that much armor. The 8 armor at level 2 is plenty already, and if you're using the armor healing, it's even more than that. There are still other strategies you can pull off by having that extra armor, and those are perfectly valid too. But it's not enough to convince me that Impervious is better than Spike Reforge. Maybe if Impervious applied some sort of damage reduction so that it would make up for the Dark Knight's weakness to non-physical attacks, it would make the decision between which skill to pick much harder. The Dark Knight at level 3 His HP increases to 6, his armor increases to 9, his regeneration increases to 4, and his attack increases to 6. So, his most significant stat gain is in the damage department, and this is a really good thing. His primary role as a tank is now perfectly complemented by his ability to deal high damage. Even Armor of Thorns gets an upgrade, now dealing 2 true damage by default and making Spike Reforge add up to 5 true damage total instead of 4, hitting another great breakpoint. His first skill is Soul Strike. This is a full action that deals his attack stat as physical damage and heals him by 3 HP. The actual formula for the healing is equal to his level, but since he can only use the skill at level 3, the number will always be equal to 3. The damage can become true damage if the target is weakened thanks to the epic effect, but otherwise, it's no stronger than his basic attack. Unfortunately, this skill is not very good. A full action melee skill is really hard to land. It means that you need to be in melee range of an enemy by the time the Dark Knight's turn comes. 
that often requires the enemy to come up and attack the Dark Knight first. While that by itself is not an issue, it's only more useful than Dark Slash when the Dark Knight needs to heal. So he has to be in a situation where he takes non-physical damage and starts his next turn in melee range of an enemy that he can use this against. It's very niche. Plus, he doesn't have the highest HP, so it's less common for him to actually survive the non-physical damage he takes. At most, this lets him tank one more non-physical attack, and that's it. It has a 3 turn cooldown too, so he can't even heal back to back. Another unfortunate aspect of this skill is that it's the only dark magic in his arsenal. Remember when I said that I had some choice words for his in-game lore? Well, here they are. This nincompoop traded his HP for an ability that restores his HP. This single attack that's hard to use and rarely comes in handy without killing him is all he got for permanently sacrificing his health. But I have to commend Ironhide for this. Soul Strike is a meta commentary on Sigma males. This Dark Knight is nothing more than a beta male putting on a front. The level 2 stats were a trick to convince you that men were better than women, and you fell for it. Men aren't actually better than women, it's silly and immature to compare them. Thank you Ironhide Game Studio for truly enlightening us. The next level 3 skill available to the Dark Knight, and the one you should definitely pick, is Porcupine Slam. This takes his current thorns damage, doubles it, and deals it as physical damage in an AoE around the Dark Knight. Spike Reforge's bonus 3 damage synergizes wonderfully with this skill, allowing it to deal the same amount of damage as Rupture, but to multiple enemies. Any chances that Impervious had of competing with Spike Reforge just went out the window, because there is no such synergy with Soul Strike, so it makes the picks for his skills pretty easy. The Dark Knight is so good at his job of tanking that it can feel redundant to have other tanks in the party, that is unless they provide some means of handling non-physical attacks, since that is his major weakness. He does well at any level, so he fits into parties that have higher level up priorities or lower priorities. He's a fairly good candidate for stat buffs, but his skill formulas are all additive, so he's not the best choice for sharpening stones. He also has plenty of armor already, so it's usually better to save your resources on other things, unless you just want the spectacle of high armor. He suffers a lot from being exhausted, and doesn't benefit that well from being invigorated. I have very positive feelings about this character overall, but it doesn't stop him from sometimes feeling like dead weight whenever magic or true damage is a present threat. He doesn't move into range of those enemies, or at least he can't without getting killed, so he often ends up being the party member who does the least during a combat encounter. It is a really glaring flaw that exists to make the rest of his attributes shine, which is ironic for a Dark Knight. So, in conclusion, the Dark Knight is one of the characters of all time.